I built a drawer cabinet for underneath my Rubo workbench with two drawers. I tried to keep it low profile as I could so it left plenty of room under the top for any clamping or any type of that stuff. The drawer cabinet will be just inside of the uh, sliding dead man so it won't interfere with that. And I used the same tongue and groove boards on top as in Christopher Schwartz's book where he used on top of the stretchers when he made a shelf. So it's the tongue and groove just dialed to the top. I could have used um, regular plywood for the drawer cabinet, but since I had some maple, I decided to go ahead and make it out of that. So that kind of veered off of the plans from the book, and I wasn't sure really how to make it. So hopefully it did pretty good. I think it looked, turned out really nice. So I'll show you how I made that here in a minute. I start by cutting the uh, pieces for the sides of the drawer cabinet. This is a lot of six quarters maple. I have some narrower stuff for the front and I'm just gluing it together. A longer top and bottom piece and then three shorter pieces. Two on the sides and one in the middle between the two drawers. Here I am gluing it up. And here's a mistake, don't ever do this. Don't ever put wax paper down on your table saw and then glue on top of it. Because the glue, when the moisture goes right through the wax paper. Which leads to rust, so I had to clean that off. That was a bummer. So, don't do it. <laughs> Otherwise the glue up went well of the front facing. This is Dado's in the uh, bottom edge for the bottom plywood to fit in. Of course you don't want the Dado's to go all the way through and show on the outside, so you have to cut, on two of the sides you have to cut down and leave the, ed the ending edge undone so you don't see a gap there. I put tape on the table saw to mark where to start and stop. There's rabbits on the edge you can see there. Where the side pieces fit in too. Just doing some test fits. Right after this I built my crosscut sled. It would have been nice to have that here. So the dados that I don't do all the way through I have to just clean up with a chisel, which is fairly simple. It just takes a minute. This is cutting the top rabbit for the um, top shelf pieces that will fit into the rabbit. Once again, you can't cut all the way through, or you'll see a gap on the outside edge. So I got my start and stop tape on the saw and just cut part of the way and then finish that up by hand with a chisel and a little saw. And here I am chiseling the piece loose. It's mostly loose except for on the ends.
So this rabbit is a little deeper than the top pieces. So there will be an edge around the whole thing, so things I lay on top don't roll off onto the floor, hopefully. It's just a few hundreds higher on the outside edge, so hopefully it will keep things from rolling off. The drawer cabinet fits just barely between the legs of the bench and sets on top of the two stretchers. I put um, some dados in there and, a, and glued a piece of maple into the sides of the stretchers. So this will set right on top of that. The glue up went well. It was pretty simple. Got the plywood bottom in there. It's just free floating, so if something expands and contracts, the bottom will just still sit there, but it won't stop anything from expanding and make it crack or whatever. Making sure it's square as I clamp it up. And I put dowels in the front. I didn't want to put screws because nothing else in the workbench had screws really. So I stuck some dowels, three on each corner like this. I'm going to cut those flush later. This is the sides of the drawers. And I'm rounding off the top edges. I'm using the Craig um, whatever pocket hole system to glue those or to hold the drawers together a little bit better. I did glue them too. The drawers have a floating um, plywood bottom. This is all half inch Baltic birch. So these are the top boards and making the uh, tongue there. If you cut it on one side and then flip it 180 degrees and cut it on the other side, that way you'll get your tongue centered. Same thing with the grooves when I cut those. I just I didn't use a dado blade, so I later came back and did the cut the center part out of it of the uh, grooves, cutting the top pieces to length. I put some runners in the drawer cabinet for the drawers and a little top piece so that the drawer won't tilt down when I pull the drawer out. I'm chamfering the edges of all the top pieces, and that kind of gave it a nice look. I thought. That was pretty easy to do. I just put some double sided tape to help hold the front on until I got the screws in. I just put two screws in each one. Once again in case it expands and contracts it will allow it to do that because there's not four screws holding each corner or anything which would constrain it and maybe possibly crack. I don't know too much about that besides what I've read so hopefully it won't happen to me. Some boiled linseed oil, and that really brought out the grain. This one piece on the uh, right side is just spectacular. For the top of the drawer cabinet, I used tongue groove boards. These are about inch and a quarter thick maple, so it's pretty thick, strong boards. Um, this is basically the same design as the shelf in Chris Schwartz's book. 
I just put it on top of my drawer cabinet instead of down on top of the stretchers. And then I used quarter inch dowels to pin it in to the rabbet that's in the top of this inch and a quarter thing, side piece so that it can expand and contract without cracking hopefully if I designed it right. So I left a little room in between each one. The tongue and groove are fairly loose so that it can easily slide in and out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it if you liked it to hit like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.